to uh, the importance uh, and how uh, our customers use policy management uh, to secure their organizations. And then uh, some of the ways that if you're an existing Tufin customer, which I, I know there are some here, uh, bringing up to speed on a couple of new things that we've added uh, even in the last two weeks um, that have since been released. Uh, but so my name, Dan Rao, Product Manager of Cybersecurity Solutions at Tufin. If you're not familiar with Tufin, uh, we are mostly represented as the security policy company. So when you think about the network itself, it's, it's uh, comprised of all sorts of different uh, infrastructure and network security infrastructure, right? And what we do is we consolidate the management of basically all those different management consoles out there to stitch everything together. We, we understand what can talk to what and how they can talk and, and who they are, right? It's an effective understanding and abstraction of all the policies across the organization. Um, we're a larger organization uh, in our space, so at least the biggest in our competitive field. Uh, we have over 2000 customers, over uh, half of the Fortune 50 uh, that use our solutions, a number of patents, a bevy of employees and IPO'd. Uh, at this point, I guess it was just about two years ago now. A uh, couple of vanity stats that I won't spend time on uh, in granularity, but um, suffice it to say that if uh, your organization uh, existed pre-internet, uh, there's probably an installation uh, of Tufin or a requirement for something like this because all the different uh, layers of investment and in, uh, network uh, security infrastructure over time, the adoption of cloud has really kind of increased uh, the complexity of the network management. Um, COVID obviously prompted a lot of organizations to undertake uh, what I think is commonly deemed a digital transformation uh, exercise in about two weeks. And that's something that most folks had planned to do in about 10 years. Um, and that's actually increased a lot of the complexity within the network, right? We had a lot of different teams that are now participating in network engineering or owning different aspects of the network, or parts of the network. And uh, the communication lines uh, had to kind of ramp up, but in doing so, processes uh, were typically broken that would have typically been adhered to. Uh, generally speaking, it seems as though most organizations have siloed teams. We have teams that might manage the routers, those that might manage the firewalls, those that might administer uh, our SDN environment, and maybe we have a DevOps team uh, or development team that holds the keys to the cloud, uh, the cloud console. What happens though, across all of this, is we have fragmented teams, we have fragmented uh, processes and things tend to uh, get complicated and, and our processes actually grind to a little bit of a halt, right? So for us to actually kind of regain the business agility um, that we once had when things were a lot more simple, we need to have an effective and comprehensive automated policy management, which means that when an access request comes in and we need to connect a, a, a server in the public cloud, to one in our SDN environment, and we're traversing the corporate network, we need to understand all the different connectivity points along the way, whether or not connectivity exists and provide that connectivity where it doesn't to enable that connection, all while ensuring security in this process too. And that becomes really complicated, right? The results of these complications is that typically organizations are running to play catch up, they're adding more access, they're not necessarily removing it. And what happens is we see the results in cyber attacks, right? Um, most common, uh, at least I say, when people ask me like, why do people look at Tufin? Um, typically they fall into one or two buckets. Uh, they've either been breached because they had a policy in place that they weren't aware of that was ever permissive, whether that be uh, an exposure to the cloud because dev opened up a port for a patch and they never closed it and that was used for exploitation, or someone wrote a policy five years ago and it was never removed because rule number one in security, despite uh, all the fear mongering, is don't break anything, right? So we let that policy sit in place because we didn't necessarily know what it, it was. And uh, that's the type of policy that is used in uh, kind of a large spread attack. So like, uh, unfortunately for Tufin, WannaCry was very beneficial to our business. There are a lot of organizations out there that are in the business of adding access and not necessarily removing it. Um, there's also the, the complications of adding new technologies, right? We have different teams managing different types of technology and even translating uh, things across the way into the different vendor speak becomes uh, complicated. And without a fail, usually what happens when there's uh, breakage in connectivity, uh, it ends up as either a finger pointing mission or everyone's pointing to the firewall admins, sometimes two of the same. Um, the, the most important thing is, as we've just seen this rapid adoption of different technology, we have a ton of adoption of new technologies. And I think what's also really important to consider is that as you invest in some of these newer security technologies that are providing some 
very impressive capabilities to secure your organization that you're able to use those adjacent towards your, your legacy devices, right? Next-gen firewalls can use uh, app ID and user ID, but routers don't necessarily understand those. Uh, so we need to actually be able to translate uh, the, those access requirements to the terms that routers can understand and adjust them, right? Uh, and of course, compliance is always evolving, uh, whether that be from regulatory bodies uh, or, or from our own internal standards as well. So cybersecurity cloud network ops require a new approach, right? Uh, we can't necessarily just wait for network security and security to review everything. What we now need to do is actually automate, right? And so the way that our customers are undertaking this is it a policy-centric approach to security. It basically means that if we understand and implement uh, a model for risk, it means that as new access requests come in, we can actually provision those with integrated security, meaning that we're actually not increasing our attack surface over time. We're, we're maintaining a known and measured state. But it also means that if we're deploying a risk benchmark uh, of uh, access, then we're also able to uh, identify all kind of the ugly policies in our network, the things that are exposing us to greater risk. Um, because of all this, we have a consistent model in place. And uh, Tufin, while uh, we'll go through some of the GUI of the product, it also almost kind of operates as middleware. Um, it's a highly integrated product. You wouldn't necessarily buy Tufin solutions as a standalone uh, issue or uh, to resolve a single issue. It's more so you have uh, a tool issue. You have too many things in your environment. And you can't necessarily manage them all under uh, a single console. Uh, the way that our customers typically hold themselves into increasing the maturity of network security policy management is to start with visibility. Now, organizations typically fall in one of two buckets. One, uh, we have a, a strong emphasis on security. It means that every time before we make a change, we're going to uh, give it a ton of scrutiny. We're going to look at it. It typically holds back the actual provisioning of changes, and this is painful for organizations, right? Especially if we're talking about launching applications that are tied to revenue for the business. Uh, alternatively, as we saw in kind of the early and even current adoption of cloud, uh, we can be very agile about this, meaning that we are going to approve everything and we'll let security chase um, you know, the risks as they identify them. But typically, this results in an over-permissive rule-based, right? And, and this is generally considered very risky. So what we have to do is actually find the balance between these two things. And first and foremost, we have to gain visibility. We have to understand all the policies across our network, across all the network security infrastructure and our cloud consoles. Uh, like security groups, right, to understand what policies are in place. That we need to have some sort of model in place to actually identify which of those policies shouldn't be there, right? What are the policies that were written, uh, the people that sat in the seats before you did, um, and we don't have any documentation associated with the rules not being hit. This is literally just a legacy rule. Or perhaps it's one that uh, is shadowed or redundant, and we just want to remove that. We want to optimize our policy set. But these are all sort of automated calculations that our customers would undertake. It also means that if we're cleaning up a rule base, we're actually able to uh, analyze policies and design new policies, right? Meaning that we can have a uh, optimized policy set. And as we add access, we're not necessarily increasing risk over time, but enabling the business. Now, the other perspective here is it's all about the applications, right? So application-driven automation is a different solution for actually ingesting all the different application dependency requirements uh, of an application and provisioning those connectivity requirements. So it kind of serves as basically the Rolodex of the application requirements of your organization, which means that if there's an outage, you can actually restore connectivity to the application. And many times for our customers that use this, they're actually aware of that outage before they get the ticket in. Now, what's most important when we talk about changes is that these changes can be automated. And Tufin is highly configurable in the sense that they can be automated up to the comfort level of an organization, and that extends all the way through zero touch. So, and what I think most of our customers have typically been calling kind of the golden rule, if they get an access request that isn't deemed risky, then they can automatically provision that access and they can align that, that change to a change window or they can provision it at, at the time that they uh, automatically approve it as well. But that's something that can literally take minutes as opposed to something that typically takes days. Now, the way that we do this is through uh, abstraction of all the different policies across all the different vendors, right? So for those of you that have changed uh, uh, roles or positions within organizations and there's different vendors or different types of infrastructure, maybe you, you've been working in network engineering and have shifted off to cloud, you have to learn new things. You have to learn new vendors, new terminology, new command line interfaces. Generally speaking, 
network connectivity actually isn't that different across the way, right? Things are just marketed differently or marked differently by different vendors. So what Tufin does is we abstract all the policies across your routers and your firewalls and your next gen firewalls and your SDN and your ADA or public cloud environments. And we normalize these and we make them very searchable, which means that you could basically Google your policies across your organization. But it also means that we can implement baselines for risk and we can make changes to policies based upon risk or uh, based upon uh, new access requests. It also means that when we understand the concept of risk and network connections, we can also identify where there isn't connectivity where it needs to be. And that kind of ties in the secure up value prop. Now, I'm gonna quickly run through uh, what the actual uh, uh, products are and kind of what the high level value prop is. And then we can give you an update on kind of some of the different integration applications. Um, one thing that is very rele relevant for any organization out there that uh, has any sort of DevOps team or thinks they have Kubernetes, and I will quote Rich Mogul, who's a respected technologist in the security community, if you don't think you have Kubernetes uh, running on your network, I assure you that you do. Um, this is effectively the future for cloud infrastructure management. And uh, in doing so, we're basically uh, entrusting security to personnel that don't have security as their task or even necessarily a priority. So Secure Cloud uh, provides the ability to abstract all the policies of your cloud infrastructure uh, and the cloud native security controls, as well as uh, Kubernetes to actually understand connectivity in that network. So you can understand where there is access, uh, where there is vulnerable access, and actually implement guardrails uh, for that policy. So it's very helpful for organizations that are trying to achieve some degree of compliance within the cloud or minimally gain visibility into where risks lie. Uh, Secure Track is our baseline uh, uh, product. Uh, it's required for all of our customers. And effectively, what that solution does is it abstracts all those policies and provides you visibility over risks in the environment, whether that be based upon best practices, you know, the overall permissiveness of services, or the compliance of services, right? Um, sometimes networks should not be able to communicate, right? And typically, the way that we approach this is through network segmentation, right? Um, it, it, I think the common example is like for PCI, right? So PCI web can talk to PCI app, which can talk to PCI data, but you wouldn't necessarily want to hop from PCI web to data. Now, what we do is we logically organize this type of infrastructure and then define the policies by which these different network segments uh, can connect and then identify where in the network there are policies that violate um, that model, right? But also means moving forward because we understand compliance, we can approve changes to it. Changes are done through our workflow product, which is called Secure Change. Uh, we have a number of different out-of-the-box workflows that are available to customers. Typically, folks would integrate this with like ServiceNow or another ITSM, but you know, basically your customers can continue to put in source destination and service. And because SecureTrack understands the network, we can design and then provision those changes across all the different providers and validate those too. So also very helpful for uh, compliance uh, as well. And Secure App is kind of the top level component that provides the ability to understand application dependencies uh, and actually restore connections or provision connections, uh, depending upon the type of request from application owners. Uh, so very helpful for organizations that are trying to get uh, that Rolodex put together of all the different applications that are deployed. Um, I kind of want to quickly talk about how customers are actually using basically secure track and secure change emphatically. And for those of you that are existing Tufin customers, uh, the screenshots I'm sharing with you are from our Aurora product, which is the next uh, evolution of, of secure track uh, and change. And it's actually uh, available uh, for you to migrate to uh, today. So uh, a good opportunity to kind of benefit from some of the uh, improvements we made and re-architecture on microservices. So in SecureTrack, we understand network connections. Uh, and you can see off to the left, we have all the different vendors and so forth that are in there, very easy to onboard them. And you'll see some immediate uh, analytical capabilities. We can identify where there are risks associated with policies in the environment. And we can identify where there are policies that require some degree of optimization or cleanup. Now, we also have the ability to search across policies. So in this scenario, this is a, a rule viewer, kind of like Google for all your policies, right? And we can see all the different vendors and, and policies there in place. But here you can see, I put in a string of a permissiveness level high and time less hit before last year. Now, if you think about it, a lot of organizations don't necessarily have a good clarity or understanding of the policies in their environment and why they're there. And this is actually a very helpful solution for actually us to identify which policies we have that we don't necessarily need. A uh, really easy tactical way to kind of go through that. Uh, earlier, I mentioned the ability to deploy a risk benchmark, right? And the way that we do that is by defining uh, 
security zones, which are very indicative of like a network segment, right? So IPs, subnets, security groups, whatever, you can uh, logically group these things together and then define the policies by which they can or cannot connect, right? Uh, so port and protocol. Uh, we also have qualitative alignment capabilities too, right? So if a rule hasn't been hit in 30 days, then we would want to uh, indicate it as a violation. And the USP is configured through the GUI. We have a ton of templates that align towards like PCI and NERC compliance, but also best practices, as well as one that generally is more aligned to NIST. Um, but what's also very interesting, I think, for uh, a lot of our customers today, if they didn't are, or if they weren't already aware of it, is that these network zones themselves uh, typically align towards how you are currently classifying your subnets and your IPAM or DDI solution. And we actually have an integration application available for that today, meaning that if you're an Infoblox or Blue Cat, uh, Fission IP or PHP IPAM customer, you can populate these zones, which is very helpful because it means that um, you can identify with a high degree of trust in the violations uh, that they are in fact accurate. Now, when we stitch together all the different network security infrastructure and uh, cloud platforms of the network, we actually understand network topology. This is really helpful because a lot of the times when you hear about an outage, typically they point to the firewall team, but here you can actually identify exactly where uh, connectivity breaks within the network. Uh, here's an example of a path analysis. So you can see that I put it in source destination uh, service of any, and we actually see some firewalls deployed in Azure, right? And we can see where connectivity breaks. Based upon this, we uh, need to go modify a security group in Azure as well as a FortiGate firewall as well. So when we understand connectivity in the network, we also have the ability to make changes to that connection, right? So in that scenario, if we understand that connectivity is required, we can design provision changes. And so here you see an example of that workflow uh, solution that we discussed earlier, secure change. You can see uh, source and destination. Our solution calculates the targets where policies need to be applied and designs those policies aligned to the requirements of the access request itself too. We also calculate for risk of this access, which is also helpful for organizations to reprieve security from reviewing every single access request that comes in. So you consider uh, the onus or obligation to review everything individually. It typically ends up holding back connectivity requests pretty significantly. So utilizing that zone to zone based segmentation matrix that I showed you earlier, uh, you're actually able to calculate whether or not that access request is uh, risky or not. And another recent uh, feature that we released is integration with vulnerability management providers. So in addition to calculating the riskiness of the service itself, you could also calculate whether or not the access request is risky based upon the vulnerability of assets in the source and destination. Now, through these solutions, uh, we see our customers maximize security and business agility with security policy orchestration. As I mentioned, these changes do take place in uh, minutes instead of days. Uh, they're able to gain visibility and control across their on-prem cloud native and hybrid cloud environments and ensure continuous compliance with security standards. They're also able to enable faster delivery of secure applications by integrating network and security teams with DevOps as well. Now, one thing I think that's relevant to note for any existing customer or those that uh, are starting to take a look at security policy orchestration is that Tufin has a well-developed and curated Tufin partner ecosystem. So if you think about like one of the most important things in, in security is network connectivity. And if you actually understand that, you're able to really leverage a ton more of your tools more effectively, right? Because you think about uh, vulnerabilities, right? Like uh, Eric had mentioned earlier, like my background or my starting security was in penetration testing. In a lot of ways, I could operate more efficiently than security teams because I had more restrictions. I had to abide by network security controls. If I can't access a vulnerability, I can't exploit it. And when you think about the actual value application of network context to any sort of these security solutions, that's actually really helpful, right? You can actually understand where your network is contextually exposed for exploitation and the you know, example of vulnerability management solutions. So uh, in the last uh, year or so, Tufin's been developing supported solutions for different security uh, vendors out there. Um, it is available at marketplace.tufin.com. Uh, there's a number of different free integration applications as well as subscription applications, but you're more than welcome to evaluate those. Uh, there's no sort of uh, obligation to, to engage with Tufin. Um, and we do provide the, the capabilities to uh, have out of the box integrations with uh, providers outside of the you know, traditional router firewall uh, and cloud vendors as well. And then uh, we also have a robust ecosystem of uh, technology alliance partners uh, that qualify or, or certify into our integration ecosystem as well. So if you think about network connectivity 
and the value add to a source solution, for example, for incident response. Uh, if we know an asset is compromised and we need to investigate this uh, expanse of that, that uh, attack, we can see what other objects are in that uh, network object group that might have been accessed, right? And we can also take action in the same way that we discussed the scenario of adding access, we can also remove it, right? So we can add uh, uh, vulnerable assets to a global block group, for example, without necessarily rewriting a bunch of firewall policies. Um, and kind of a, the, the shout out here, I talked a little bit about the vulnerability integrations, but uh, for those of you that are looking to further intertwine or gain efficiencies in vulnerability management or policy management through an uh, uh, information security lens, uh, we now provide customers the ability uh, to not only prevent risk based upon the change management process, but also identify where they have exploitable assets in their environment through native integrations with vulnerability management providers like Tenable and Qualys and Rapid7. Uh, and because we have workflows, uh, we're also able to provide mitigation outcome capabilities as well. And these are solutions that any of our customers can uh, download and, and test today. And with that, uh, I did keep it on time, maybe 